everyone, and welcome to episode 486 of the MTG Goldfish Podcast. I'm Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and we have the full crew here this week, kicking things off with the owner of MTG Goldfish, Richard. How are you this fine Monday, Richard? Good morning, Seth. Doing well, doing well. Excited uh, at uh, Commander Horizons 3, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this Commander Horizons set looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. I was like, it even, even has some modern cards in there. Who would have thought? But we got another co-host in Krim. Good morning, Krim. How are you today? Morning. Uh, pretty, you know what? I'm pretty excited to look over some of these cards because some of these things look pretty busted. So uh, that's going to be our big topic for today. We are right smack dab in the middle of Modern Horizons 3 spoilers. Last week, spoiler season hadn't even really started, so we didn't have much to talk about. This week, we have a ton of stuff to talk about. So we're going to dedicate pretty much the entire cast to talking about Modern Horizons 3. Before we jump into it, though, a reminder that today's show is brought to you by Card Conduit. And Card Conduit's the easiest way to sell your magic cards. And if you ever get tired of the hassles of buy listing, you can skip them with Card Conduit. You can use their curated service to send in as many cards as you want with a buy list value of a dollar or more and pay just a 5% service fee. And if you you want to do a bit of work you can use the sorted service where you list and sort your cards in advance and pay just a two percent fee either way you're going to get a detailed report with the results in a fast payment once your order is processed and you can even get another 10 percent off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mtg goldfish card conduit they're the easiest way to sell your magic cards so thank you to card conduit for supporting the show and let's talk some modern horizons 3 but before we get into the cards and we have a huge list of cards to talk about what do you think of the makeup of this set so one of the big criticisms, like every Modern Horizons, is it's really Commander Horizons. What do you think of the mixture of, like, Commander cards to Modern cards? Like, is that criticism justified? Is that just people memeing or misunderstanding? Last time everyone said it, and then Evoke Elementals, like, straight up broke Modern and, like, <laughs> just absolutely dominated the meta. What do you think of the, the mixture here? Is this more Commandery than past Horizon sets? I mean, it. I thought every set is just Commander Horizons now. <laughs> so, like, like, is this really any different? This is just more powerful cards that also will play in modern. Uh, I, to me, I also think to call this may, maybe I, you know, I don't play enough modern to really like like to speak on this. But to me, this does still seem like it's got a lot of power. But it's just specifically just to for like Eldrazi and a few other decks. That kind of maybe could have used the uh, the boost, maybe like some cards for Yogg and things like that. So I don't know. I mean, this doesn't feel like it's only a commander set. But then again, as I said, everything is pretty much a commander only set. Yeah. It's, what do you think, Richard? It's it's both a meme and true. Okay, because don't worry, modern is rotating when the set releases, but. But but hold your horses, commander is gonna rotate too. Uh, so I think Krim hit it. It's they made the same number of commander cards, but because it's modern power level, it's super strong, and these commander cards are going to see play, and these modern cards are going to see play. So uh, as a modern player, like you can't really be upset about it, other than the fact that they're stealing our thunder. Like no one's talking about modern. <laughs> like everyone's talking about commander and timeless. And like, yeah. oh yeah, maybe Amulet Titan, right? <laughs> but like, I would be shocked if we didn't get new archetypes. If all the top tier decks didn't get multiple editions somewhere. So like, I I, I think this fits modern, right? Like the the only problem is they're stealing our thunder, and everyone's talking about how this is broken in commander instead of like trying to brew modern decks. So that is the only criticism. But the 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 set itself has tons of modern cards, uh, oh, yeah. commander cards, legacy players shaking in their boots. <laughs> uh, anytime there's a commander staple, like oh no, did it break <laughs> legacy? Uh, so <laughs> I think every Magic player, arena players, are getting it on timeless. So everyone is hyped for the set. Probably going to be the best set of all time. Probably going to be the most yeah. hyped set of all time. Yeah, might not be Lord of the Rings, but it is going to be super hyped. And I will say, like, the one thing Wizards could do differently if they don't want people making the, you know, Commander Horizons jokes, cards like Brea and Kalia, like the legitimate legitimate Commander Precon cards showing up at Mythic kind of like reinforces that. But I'm not sure 
Wizards even cares. They might be happy that Commander players, if you look at their marketing, a lot of their marketing is like, hey, we know it's called Modern Horizons, but there's good Commander cards in here, we promise, type of stuff. So I think they might not mind if people meme on it being Commander Horizons, because I think they want to make sure Commander players know that like it's, this it's, that is for you too. It's reverse alchemy. You know you want to make an <laughs> alchemy video, but if you put alchemy in the title, you're like screwed, right? But if everyone yeah. starts memeing that your video is a commander video, you're like, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. So they, they had to call it Modern Horizons to appease the modern players, but they really want everyone to meme and call it Commander Horizon, so they actually sell the packs. <laughs> I think I think that might actually be true, but anyway. That's a that's the set itself. We have a ton of cards to talk about. Richard, why don't you guide us through this huge list of spoilers? All right. Uh, there's probably way too many potentially playable cards in, in Modern Horizons 3 uh, for us to talk about. So we're going to pick off a couple uh, and then uh, check out the rest on MG Previews. Oh, uh, should also say we're going to focus uh, mostly on 60 card formats because we'll also do some uh, some Commander Clash podcasts to talk about the best and our favorite cards for Commander too. So our eyes going to be mostly focused on modern and other 60 card formats. All right, let's start with uh, our favorite mechanic energy. So Wizards has brought energy back and uh, let's see if they broke it. Primal Prayers, two green green. It's an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you get two, uh, two energy. You may cast creature spells with mana value three or less by paying one energy rather than paying their mana cost. If you cast a spell this way, you may cast it as though it had flash. Okay. Okay. Uh, energy. Energy allure it. It's a Lauren. <laughs> it's a Lauren, but with energy. This card is wild. Like, I am actually kind of surprised they made this one. When I first read the card, I kind of misread it and thought that you needed to pay energy equal to the mana value of the card. But it's just one energy, no matter what creature, as long as this mana value is three or less, which means it's really easy to go infinite with this card. I've already seen like probably five different infinite combos with this card. The Green Belt Rampager, this old one drop from our original energy run, just goes infinite by itself, throw in something that triggers as creatures enter, leave the battlefield, and you can win the game or gain infinite life. Uh, there's Guide of Souls, I think it is which is also in the set, which is like a soul sister that gains an energy whenever a creature comes into play. There's infinite combos with that. This card's absolutely wild. The only question is like, do you think it's going to be good, Richard? Like, are, are these against the odds combos we're talking about? Or is this like legacy Aluren combos? Because Aluren is like a legit, well, tier three, but like it was a legit legacy deck at one point, And Aluren combo was the thing people would actually like win tournaments with. Are we going to have the same thing going on in modern, you think? It, it it was a a one additional card combo <laughs> that you described, Seth. Uh, also, it has flash. Like like so, Primal Prayers doesn't have flash, but the the creature has flash, right? So you can drop Primal Prayers in response to them trying to remove it. You just combo off. Mm -hmm. um, this has problems. I think I think this will be good. The problem is like, is there a shell, right? So when the combo is disrupted, do you have a legitimate deck, right? That's what sets apart the tier one decks from the tier two decks in modern right like even if tron doesn't assemble tron they'll beat your face down right like you stop the merc tide you're dying to drc anyway like i'm a titan like i i died to like freaking the 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 dryad guy just like wolf run up the kazoo right like so <laughs> do you have a legitimate secondary plan that's the question when you're when you're stuck with just the elephant in hand and primal pairs cannot resolve can you play a game like, Yogg does this exceptionally well. So whatever this deck is, can it do it? I don't know, because I don't know what the whole shell is, how many combos you want to stick in here. Uh, but you're fighting for a lot of green-based combos. Because remember, Yogg replaced um, Malira combo, whatever that oh, was. Devoted Druid. Right? Devoted, Devoted Druid Remedy. combo. Yep, like, yep. There, there's like a whole bunch of green-based creature combos that have existed, and Yogg Moth is king right now, right? So does this supplant that? I don't know. I mean, I, that is a really good point, right? Because there's like Heliod combo that goes infinite. That used to be a thing. Devoted Druid combos. So we've seen these like two to three piece creature combo decks really kind of fade away and Yagmoth just be the only game in town. I don't know if this offers something different compared to those combos. Like it's still, you're going to need two or three pieces. Some of those pieces are not going to be that good 
if you're not comboing, but I guess Yogg's playing Young Wolf, which is not that good if you're not comboing, so maybe that's not like a deal breaker. I gotta think, though, that there's gonna be a way to break this card. Krim, what do you think about this one? What about what about Arena? Is this something we should uh, keep in mind for Timeless and Historic? That That's where it's different, right? There's a, a plethora of like pretty much a, like green combos and whatnot running around in Modern, but in Timeless... I think that they're actually what they're like. They people have attempted to build Yog, right? And there not are very some. Good, yeah, it's not very good. Uh, I I think this because Green Belt Rampager. That's the only thing I need to remember. Is that on Arena? Oh, I assumed that it was. Kaladesh it is either. Yeah, Kaladesh. I I I. But they remember they did Kaladesh remastered, right? And I don't know what was and wasn't on that. There were some cards left off, but if. If Greenbelt Rampager it is, is on there. It is. Uh, okay. Confirmed, it is on Arena. Then, yeah, I, I think this would be pretty good, right? Like, I think this would be pretty good. Uh, like, although it might be a little bit slower than the other things that are going on, right? Like, you have show and tell. Uh, you have all these other things that might be able to just kill you right then and there before you can get Primal Prayers on board. Yeah, it'll depend on the shell, right? You can put your thoughts yeah. or whatever. There's got to be a way to do it. Also, like, a Sarax on Arena, that's the other way to go infinite with this, that we see, like, yeah. Legacy Allure in use as our finisher is, like, infinite dungeon crawling with a Sarax. So, I don't know. I'm excited to build around this card. Whether or not it actually breaks outside of Tier 3 or whatever, eh, we'll have to see, but it's going to be fun to build. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to and say it sucks, just so we have some content. <laughs> because here's two reasons. The elephant is, like, unplayable by itself. Like, it's a one drop that bounces back if you don't have energy. So you can't even, like, play it and, like, beat down. It takes, like, infinite mana. And then, two, it's an enchantment. So you can't tutor it in the same way as, like, you know, a Coco combo, a Court of Calling. Like, that kind of stuff is what you kind of need in modern. And being an enchantment, you're soft to, like, Leyline Binding and Besage you anyway. But you can't tutor it out. So I don't think it's going to have the resiliency, but who knows? Yeah, uh, I mean, pick your poison. Also, very heavily played, so kind kind of scary. Let's talk about uh, a questionable card, which you gotta talk about for for cycle reasons. Flage, Titan of Fire's Fury, <laughs> one red and a white six six. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice unless it's escaped. So it's a Kroxa Uro bro. Uh, when cycle. Flage <laughs> enters the battlefield or gate or attacks, it deals 3 damage to any target and you gain 3 life. Escape, white, white, red, red. Exile 5 other cards from your graveyard. Cast this thing. Uh, you know, Lightning, Helix, playable. <laughs> like, this, this card it actually is playable is... in Burn, but this is 3 mana Lightning, Helix. <laughs> Whoa, hold on. Why would Burn want this? I mean, I, like... I, Burn plays Helix, I, right? That's the yeah, only deck that yeah, plays Helix. Helix. <laughs> I, I could accept Helix on that front. Yeah, sure. But, like, I don't know. I mean, this one is three mana to Helix. Yeah. I don't know if Burn wants that. Probably not. Uh, because, so, like, <laughs> Will I it ever make it to this... four mana to escape. I don't think so either. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, like, this is Uro and Croxa, right? Like, this is, like, hey, yeah, you have to bring your little brother too, right? This is the energy it's got. And, uh, <laughs> I, I, Jess no. guy control. No. Oh. Jess guy like is we got Vardu. Like there's no Vardu. No. Jess guy control. Can we can we is this a why would guy. Jess guy control want a three mana lightning helix <laughs> at sorcery speed? <laughs> because you it's guys, your finisher. You guys Wait, are is crazy. there is there a real this card's home? great. This card's Wait, really? great. I think I would say so it's obviously not Uro. Like Uro isn't it right, here all sure. by itself. I think this is as good or better than Croxa, honestly. I Croxa's think like, unplayable. Is on... <laughs> it's like fringe Croxa seems like one of play. <laughs> like it shows up as like a one of in some mid range decks. So if you Hold think on, about no, it, what, is, what does Croxa do? This. Croxa deals three damage and puts your opponent down a card, right? By making them discard. Each. This opponent. deals three well yeah but we're playing modern so uh but <laughs> this this deals three damage which uh is the same as croxa and you can snipe a creature with it which puts your opponent down a card 
I think this guy, I think Burn will play it. Like, I, I'm not saying it's going to be like a four of, no. you know, rotating modern, but this seems like a great one of style card where you pay a little tax on your, on your lightning helix, but then you have this like huge finisher for when you flood out or have those games in your graveyard that you get it back and it closes out the game. So I expect a lot of decks are going to play this as a one of, I think some of the four or five color Omnath decks could play it. It works with like Karuga. It works with Cascade spells because it's three mana. I think this card's actually like crocs a level. So not breaking okay. the format, but um, I think it's Omnath a very playable might, card. Omnath might be a thing. So here's the biggest difference. It's Boros. Croxa yeah. is Rakdos. Rakdos, the most powerful combination in modern magic. Boros, the meme burn color. I don't think you make it like <laughs> like like the, the burn player is like the average commander player. Anything beyond two lands is flooding out, right? So like you do not, yep. <laughs> you're never going to make it here, right? Like you're never going to make it. They're like sacking their mountains and stuff. Like they're never going to make it to four mana. On that seems juicy though. Like, oh, but it doesn't even, it doesn't even trigger. Hmm. You can get it back with Sun Titan. Mm, I guess that's not a modern thing. Oh, Amiria. What about okay. the Amiria deck? I'll see you hey. in the X3 bracket Wait, set okay. when I play okay. Siege Rhino and you play is it, Titan. <laughs> is it good in Soul Sisters, though? Imagine how much oh, God, you gain. Yeah. If you have a couple Soul Sisters and then this, you're you're cooking. Boros Soul Sisters. We now we've it. added, we went from Mono White to, to Orzov. Now we're going Mardu Soul Sisters. <laughs> and now, we now need we're all going. of power. All right. Yeah. Uh, there are flip blockers in the set. I don't think we've talked about a flip blocker yet. Uh, we've got Tamio, Inquisitive Student. It's a one mana zero three uh, blue. It has flying. When it attacks, investigate. When you draw your third card in a turn, exile Tamio, return to the battlefield, transformed under her owner's control. Backside is a Planeswalker with three abilities, plus two until your next turn. Whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, it gets minus one, minus zero until end of turn. Minus three, return target instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, if it's a green card, add one mana of any color, okay? Minus seven, draw cards equal to half the number of cards in your library rounded up. You get an emblem with you have no maximum hand size. Uh, uh, this is a Simic card for you commander players. The backside has green on it, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, there's no green in the cost anywhere, okay? You can play it in a mono blue deck. Two starting loyalty, Wait. by the way. Hold on. You can play this in a mono blue deck? No, no. In, in, in 60. Well, not in commander. But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. But, like, this card, it, I've been pretty hyped on it to try it in Timeless, right? Uh, because you get Brainstorm there. But I am curious how actually powerful this is. Is it Delver of Secrets 2.0? Is it Monkey like, 2.0? <laughs> I, 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 I like the front side, right? Sure, the front side, it's great. But I feel, I don't know, if it actually flips, how many of these modes are relevant? But doesn't the front side suck? It's a zero three like it's not gonna I, kill your opponent like aren't, aren't you trying to flip like i don't know i wouldn't be happy if it just stays on the front side i don't think i wouldn't either so that that's where like i i'm Wait. excited to play around tamio you'd but... rather investigate than get the planeswalker no oh, no, no, no. You, gotta, <laughs> you gotta flip it yeah you, you try you to got, flip you, it you gotta flip right? it yeah but the backside, i'm curious how good these modes will be like that that's mostly it like all like it is a one mana planeswalker so i guess at that rate because it is a one mana planeswalker then i think yeah okay that's obviously pretty good so but i i i just want to see how this plays there's a lot of hype around it okay what what is the dream so the dream is turn 1 tamio turn 2 yeah, flip turn two, plus brainstorm yeah brainstorm flip plus up to plus 4 to a 4 it can't be attacked and then you defend it two turns, so plus three turns, plus six to eight, and then you ultimate, but then you and don't then have any mana. Orcish Bowmasters. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have, you have half your library in your hand. Like, is it the same clock as a Delver with the ultimate? It's not, right? Because you don't have the mana to deploy all your cards, and you do get Bowmastered to death. Uh, I think the, the dream might actually be more like... Same plan, trying to brainstorm, flip it on turn two, but then maybe the most value is like upticking and then using the negative three to like 
get back your counter spell, get back your lightning bolt. Like maybe that it, control it, when I think of it, like Jace friend's prodigy that like the backside okay. is kind of Jace friend's prodigy, right? Where Jace had a plus two that slowed, uh, slowed down attacks, a negative that let you flash back a spell from your graveyard. And then an ultimate that would like slowly win you the game by milling like this. The ultimate is not exactly the same, but if you draw half your deck, it's going to win you the game over the, over the course of a couple turns. When I think of it, like Jace friend's prodigy, that's what makes me hyped about it. Cause I severely, underrated jace i thought jace was going to be trash yeah. i said that card was so bad and that card saw a lot of modern play in its day and this seems like even easier love to flip card. into planeswalker mode so i i think it's a bad modern card because there's no brainstorm and if you're not brainstorming i can't imagine this card being like flippable enough to wor be worth it but in legacy or timeless i actually think it's pretty good like even though on the other hand if you want the downside case Remember Obnixilis when we were like, oh my God, Obnixilis, two Planeswalkers for three mana. This card's going to be the greatest Planeswalker of all time. And then it turns out its abilities just kind of suck. And even if you get two of them, you're like, oh yeah, I got two Obnixiluses, like not really doing anything. And it's fine, but it didn't end up like breaking the game or anything. So I don't know. Like I'm going to just go with it being very good in Brainstorm formats, but. I, I yeah like I I think for me and I'm not saying it's bad uh, I want to clarify that before the YouTube comments yell at me here uh, I I I just think that it is not as busted as everyone might think it is I I'd probably agree with that I do like that it blocks monkey like a zero three is actually like not a bad defender on turn one so that's kind of an upside I guess she's not an O four she still gets bolted why <laughs> I'm True. gonna say she sucks. I, I think people think Delver, but like there's no pressure here. And it's really a weird mid range control card. And like those things don't exist in modern, <laughs> right? Like you don't, you don't yeah. play control. I think it's going to be like red and six. It's going to come out. It's going to have a flash. Everyone's going to be, Argh! and then like some people are going to ultimate it. Stuff's going to happen. And then ultimately, no one plays this card, <laughs> right? Like at the end of the day, like barely everyone plays red and six anymore, right? So I think this is going to be the same. Like, you get value, but you're like, I have to return it instead of sorcery. Like, what am I doing? I'm going to ponder, return, ponder again for a minus three, like bolt, yeah. snap, bolt. Like, I, I don't like it. I don't know. It doesn't seem particularly strong and it's easy to remove. Like planeswalkers at one mana value uh, are, are not the hardiest as they used to be, right? Like it still gets leyline binding. Uh, you can get bow masters down on the backside. Like lots of bad things can happen. I don't, think stalling out the game with minus one minus zero really does much for you and bow masterings on ultimate is got to be the saddest thing you've ever seen right <laughs> normally you get to a place oh yeah ultimate, you're like i win the game and they're like no i win the game bow masters you're like what <laughs> right like <laughs> and <laughs> and just so people understand, when we talk about Bowmasters, that card is the most played creature in Legacy and in Modern. And we don't have data, but I assume it probably isn't Timeless too. So this isn't like yeah. some fringe thing that you're never going to run into. You play against Bowmasters all the time. And not only is the ultimate weak to it, the Brainstorm line is kind of weak to it too. Like imagine, oh, I'm going to Brainstorm and flip my Tamiyo on turn two and they flash in the Bowmasters and just ping it down in response and get like a 4-4. Four, four. Like kind of kind of rough. All right. Uh, flare of duplication. One red, red instant. You may sacrifice a non red, or sorry, a non token red creature rather than paying this spell's mana cost. Copy target instant or sorcery. You may choose new targets for the copy. Speaking of burn cards, speaking of uh, tribal flames, oh. this, is, this is hot. This is hot. Ooh. This is a red bird slash aggro deck card. I don't know if they have room for this. Oh. But I see upside in tribal flames. <laughs> Flare of duplication, tribal flames, your face. Like that, that is hot. <laughs> uh I I could even like just a rift bolt or literally anything, like a lightning bolt. You just you hit him with the the goblin guide, and then you sack it to copy your burn spell, kill him. Uh oh. goblin grenade if you want to go deep. Just think of all the five oh. mana burn spells you can copy with this. <laughs> oh, man. Is this card good, actually? So I was thinking, oh, this is like a commander card. It's, you know, a redirect for CDH or whatever, like a, a fork effect. The burn plan is really, really intriguing. That's very explosive, right? Like, it, you have your Goblin Guide, your Swift Spears that get in damage early. Eventually, they get stonewalled, so they can't keep attacking, and then you can cash them in to, like, copy a burn spell. My only concern would be... 
it is kind of rough off the top when you're like don't have a burn spell in hand when you're like the burn player who's like I need that last lightning bolt to close out the game and you top deck a flare you're gonna be a little sad but its upside is definitely high. I don't I, I don't think this is good in burn. It doesn't do anything on its own. Like I like I like you need another spell to go with it, right? And like Seth had mentioned, top decking this is rough, but I do like the card. I think the card is sweet. I just I don't know what kind of shell you want it in because I really don't want to sack my like what if I'm playing uh, I'm assuming tribal flames or something like that because that domain deck is also in timeless right mm -hmm. am I gonna sack my Kavu for this Holy probably yes. not <laughs> it's not like winning you the but game <laughs> but is there are there plus, any... plus you have ley line if you have ley line that kills back you can sack anything it's all red Ooh, that's <laughs> all oh, well yeah that part that might be but true. I mean, all of your creatures are like five plus power. So like, yeah, like if they counter spell you, oh boy, right? <laughs> In that deck, everything <laughs> yeah. is like five plus power except for Nakadal, I guess, right? So whatever you're sacking is a big cost. But just like Tribal Flames, Tribal Flames, Flare Duplication, take one combo hit, you're dead. You're like, what? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that is like, it allows for some really fast kills when it happens. It seems really good against like big spell finishers you know like the world soul rage deck in standard cram but there's yeah. nothing like that in timeless or modern right i've been like trying to figure out like urbane fire kills anything where your opponent's like i'm gonna kill you with this one big thing and you're like haha like i'm gonna copy it and kill you first but we just don't really have those effects in modern i don't think or in timeless oh, how about monkey how about you just take a monkey, you go to town, they try to counterspell you, you sack the monkey, counterspell it back. Is that, is that yeah. Grixis, Krim? This is a Grixis card. Is that <laughs> legitimate? They, I am going to sack my monkey to counterspell their counterspell when I'm trying to resolve a spell. Yeah, when they, when they so try this, to kill your monkey, so, you sack your monkey. Oh, Wow, that's wait, wait. real bad. The fable token <laughs> is red too, right? The goblet? The fable. Non oh, it's non token, non -token though. Yeah. Non -token. Oh, it's non token. Oh, what, no. What about the prowess decks? Like the slick shot show off soul scar mage style decks? Could they use this to just copy what a, you whatever for more, more spells going on the stack? They don't have a that big enough spell though. Better at prowess count, but then like, what am I? What's all my like? I don't know. I, I feel. That's, mm. that's your prowess win con though that you just sacked. So how are you going? To yeah, do? like what, what am I? What am I hitting you with? Right? <laughs> maybe this is just a commander card. Maybe no, maybe this one. Is, I'm actually you like kind of skeptical in tribal of this place. one. <laughs> why don't the you believe in tribal goblin place? grenade? Okay, goblin grenade. I can give goblin, goblin grenade. A lot of little red closer. creatures. Goblin grenade. Coffee. I do like that. Well, is there that is, is there a mox deck? Why or would something? goblins play <laughs> player of duplication? Oh, what about like one drop, turn to double boom bust on your indestructible land or something, blow up all your opponent's mana? Should we be copying stone rains? Maybe we should just be copying stone that rains. One? <laughs> what land? <laughs> on turn two. On turn two. I think that's where I'm at with this. I'm just going to like copy my stone rains and blood moon and then lose horribly. <laughs> all right. All right. You guys put in the commander pile. Uh, this got to be great in commander, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Ulamog the Defiler, 10 drop, legendary creature Eldrazi, 7-7. Seven, seven. When you cast this spell, target opponent exiles half of the library rounded up. Ward, sack two permanents. Ulamog ETBs with a number of plus one plus one counters on an equal to the greatest mana value among cards in exile. Ulamog has Annihilator X, where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on it. God, this card is so cool. <laughs> This That's card is good. so Is it good? Cool. <laughs> uh, is it good in, like, modern, timeless? I mean, honestly. Any 60 like, card format, not command. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, the thing here is it is still a 10 drop that, like, I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is good. Like, I, I, I like the other one more, uh, Ceaseless Hunger, because it at least answers two things on the board. Whereas this just exiles half their deck and then I could just die. Yeah, it's, that's what I was going to say, right? I feel like, so maybe there is like a new Eldrazi deck that comes because of Modern Horizons 3. So discounting right. that possibility, I think this is competing pretty directly with Ulamog Ceaseless Hunger and decks like Tron. Like Tron plays a couple of Ulamog Ceaseless Hungers. Would you play this instead? And every time I try to think through that scenario... I keep coming back to, well, like, just exile two things right away 
with ceaseless hunger so even though i think this car is good and it's splashy and it's gonna have this huge annihilator number it's gonna be massive i feel like it might be just slightly worse than ceaseless hunger and that keeps it from seeing play and like most stacks what do you think richard am i missing something is there is y'all, there y'all think argument standard this this competes with our kind of cruelty you see what you oh so you reanimate it it's reanimatable. It doesn't have the shuffle clause. And you get something in exile with some other mechanism, uh, such as pitch elementals, right? Like those don't see any play whatsoever, right? Or uh, okay. here's the hot sauce, serum powder. <laughs> the one that lets you mulligan in <laughs> exile. Your the mulligan. <laughs> but uh, like you, uh, what, what, is, what is that thing that you get a legendary creature into play? The people are. Oh, uh, Gorya's Vengeance. Reanim- yeah, Gorio's Vengeance, Sneak and Show type effects, uh, Reanimation. Uh, like, it basically competes as one of those cards. And you come in with haste with Annihilator 4 or something, 5. Like, they're dead, right? So that's, I think that's how you ooh. play it. Rather than playing it the Tron way. The Tron way is kind of sus because you got to untap with it. But uh, I, I, I like it in a Reanimator I, deck. I can get behind that. It is good to point out that it works with any cards in Exile, not just from its abilities. Even like Leyline Binding something or Path to Exile or Solitude something, whatever, just to get something into Exile. And then the only ability dependent on being cast is the Exile half your opponent's library, which outside of growing Ulamog is like the most useless of all of its abilities in most matchups. So maybe you're right. Maybe you just ignore the cast trigger. And just try to reanimate and go to town. I could, I could the, get behind the that. cast trigger. Is my, my what appeals to my inner Timmy? <laughs> I, I, what are you what talking about? Mill about? crib. Can we play this with Hedron Crab? Can this be our mill finisher? Hedron Crab, <laughs> Tasha Sidious <laughs> laughter, ramp up to Ulamog. <laughs> if you think okay, if you're planning on reanimating it, then you're not. You're not getting the mill part, and so uh, it's also ten mana. I don't know when I've seen mill get ten mana. So <laughs> it's a little steep. <laughs> creativity hmm. if there's so many good ways to cheat things in a play i'm curious if this ashy sees play and maybe it's too harsh because you gotta set up the exile but we yeah. have so many pitch spells especially older it's formats true. you can like force a will you know like you, you can do whatever you want and just annihilator three i think is enough like you don't even need that much of an annihilator to get this the job done annihilator three is a two-turn clock with annihilator three right it becomes a 10 10 and Ward Sack 2 Permanence is nice. There's worlds where that's better than the indestructibility on Ceaseless Hunger because of, like, Solitudes and effects like that. Like, a Solitude, you'd much rather have Ward Sack 2 Permanence than just, like, Void you red. know, indestructible. So, yeah. Void Red, red Edix! Rim Fierce, no Ulamog! <laughs> what does Ulamog do to me? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about this card? Necro Dominance. Black, black, black. Sure sounds like Necropotence. Legendary enchantment. Skip your draw step. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay any amount of life if you do draw that many cards. Your maximum hand size is five. If a card or token would be put into your graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. What? Is this just not Necro? It's... Maximum hand size is five. Yeah, but it's that... Necro that reduces your hand size. Most importantly, it's Necro that actually draws cards, uh, which is yeah. tough against Bowmasters. Okay. Bowmasters, Necro doesn't you get, actually you... draw cards, but yeah. but those are the only two differences, so... right? It's a card draw, and then your hand size is reduced by two, and it's legendary. Well, it's legendary. I, I would say that the, the, the drawing <laughs> is very relevant, right? Like that is very relevant because now Bowmaster will once again be well you know one of the most important creatures one Do, thing does that's... it matter though if you are just going like you could draw 10 untap don't not die actually no the army will kill you no that's too much <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah you can still kind of go through it and then if you're just gonna untap and win like hmm. well but your max hand size is five right so you draw you draw like 10 but only keep five and you have to yeah. pay 10 to draw the 10, and you got the Bowmaster. I don't think this card's bad. I think this card still has potential. I think it's a little bit hard to use, though. Like, what deck would you play this in? Like, where where does this fit as far as actual decks? Well, triple black is quite the cost. Uh, yeah. it, it only, like, Necro works in Timeless because you also have Dark Ritual, all these other things, right? Uh, but do I think that, like, why I would just play Necro over this? 
Well, so, yeah, the, yeah, if you're in Timeless, I think you would just well, play Necro. So I don't know modern. if it really matters for, for Timeless. Modern. I think you'd play real, especially with Bowmasters, you'd play real Necro. But we don't have that option in Modern or in Legacy for that matter. Maybe, like, what about Grief Scam decks? Like, what about decks that just, you can you play this fairly, like, I'm just going to empty my hand. Think, grief scam, why I was thinking is like you empty your hand so quickly. And if you're a deck that's like constantly dumping your hand and then you just go end step, draw four, next turn I got five cards to deal with, empty my hand again, do it like something like that. Or like I've seen people say Death Shadow to like get your life total super low. That might be like a little bit too cute. People love anything that says loss of life is like good in Death Shadow. Like anything that has anything to do with exile is good in Prosper. People just always go to the Death Shadow. Black Devotion, which isn't a real deck, but it would be really good in a Black Devotion deck if that was a real deck in Modern. So I don't know. I think the card's powerful. I just don't know what to do with it. And I think the Bowmaster's problem is legit. Mono Black Coffers. It's basically a one ring without the protection. But you know what they play? They play March of Sorrow. So you can just pitch all those cards away, gain a billion life, go back to five, and then have this draw engine that's there. Like, to me, this is a one ring. That's extremely hard to cast because it's triple black and then you got to do this weird stuff. Ooh, that's another good point. Is this just worse one ring? Does that kill this? Like if you got to, are you playing eight of that? Are you playing this and the one ring or are you taking out the one ring for this? Does the one ring not take this out unplayable? I think this is better than the one ring for like coffers, no? Because you can instantly draw a bunch of things and then play March to like gain a ton of life. Like, it gives you a burst of card draw, whereas the One Ring is slow to ramp up, but One Ring gives you protection. This is three mana. It also gives you three devotion. Do they play Nykthos? I have no idea. <laughs> but if you play Nykthos, this could work. Yeah, okay. It's triple black, okay. though. A normal deck can't play. Like, Shadow can't play this, right? Like, how do you yeah. get triple black going, right? But it's interesting. Hmm. The other thing people have brought up, and this might be more legacy than modern, but the possibility of just storming off on your end step where you just like play this go to your end step draw oh uh, just spend 19 draw as many cards as possible and then try to storm kill with like born upon the winds let you cast everything at instant speed for two mana uh ley, ley line of anticipation i think is the bad version but like something like that a way that you can just actually storm off on your end step which would be cool but we don't have the rituals to do it in modern so i think it have to be it have to be a legacy thing this one, this one seems super dangerous. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know it's, about this, this like, is, unlimited card draw, especially with wizards not respecting mana as a resource anymore. Like just drawing like a bunch of cards, pitching them to elementals and stuff, and then like calling it a day is kind of scary. This is like one of those no middle ground cards. I feel like this card either is like going to be banned and just like breaks everything, or we're going to find out it's not actually good. And I don't want to be the person who gives, you know, a Necro a one star review and gets laughed at for the next 30 <laughs> years. So so I'm going to avoid being the person that trashes it. <laughs> I'm, I'm scared, Necro. <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking of Storm, uh, medallions into the format. Ruby medallion. Two mana artifact. Red spells cost one less to cast. One generic less. Uh, one for each color. Does this break modern? The the what the blue one maybe or whatever for or maybe red I don't know whichever one storm I think red or black would, would probably break it you you need the storm colors uh, yeah you need the storm underworld colors. breach is a thing so ruby yeah, right. medallion helps that uh, storm yeah. hasn't been good since John Finkel tried to play it at some point <laughs> it, it it does turn your desperate rituals and pyretic rituals into dark rituals which is kind of big. Like that's yeah, that's a big deal. That's there is like a a ruby storm deck in Legacy. It's not super top tier, but if you can build your storm deck mostly mono red, we have seen this card be good enough to support an archetype like that. The modern storm deck, it's like this weird mixture where like it is gonna help with some things, like your desperate rituals. Mana Morphos becomes really good with a one mana discount where it's actually generating mana. So it does do some good things. Not gonna help with gifts though, which is a little awkward. I don't know. I think that Storm decks will will at least consider it. And Storm needs some help. So it's it's probably good that Storm's I never would have thought a couple I'd say cards. That. Yeah, I mean it's just not really a part of modern anymore. I don't know. I kind of feel like Is these there... are mostly commander reprints, right? These are the commander yeah, cards that they had to sneak in there. Oh my god. I don't see a purpose for it. The artwork is gorgeous on these, but the oh, the, the black the, one the, the, like the extended yeah. border, mm, where the guy's eyes like <laughs> dripping out of his head. That yeah, that one's sweet. super sweet. Yeah. But like I do not know if 
it's actually playable. Like, what deck wants these? A new deck. And we're in That's the point of we're in Besaju, <laughs> pick your poison world. Yeah. We live this in is... a world where it's hard to stick an artifact like we're, this. We're, we're gonna say this and it's gonna trigger everyone. It dies to Doomblade. I think this is the biggest problem, right? So there there used to be a time where like if you're not a creature, like you're an artifact or enchantment or planeswalker, you were like much hardier, oh. right? Like people yep. couldn't remove you. This comes down and dies instantly to whatever. <laughs> it needs to draw a card or something like up the beat stop. I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> because you have Vasage, you have Leyline Bind, you have like a billion ways to kill this artifact now that is not as hardy as it used to be. And that's the biggest problem with Storm, right? They play their Electromancer. You're like, cool beans, bro. You kill it. Because they actually probably needed to untap to have enough mana to go off. Uh, this suffers from the same problem. So I don't know that it would do anything useful other than make Underworld Breach speculators happy. Like, I, I don't know, right? <laughs> so... It dies to Doomblade. That's the problem. It dies to Doomblade. Yeah. Even though none of the clauses work, it literally does nothing on ETV. So that's the problem. <laughs> that that I mean, is the problem. It is very real that like people will probably answer your stuff in Storm because you don't really do much until one explosive turn, right? So they just have all this backed up removal waiting to like answer something. But maybe you can maybe you can set it up so you win the turn that it comes down. Like I guess you that got would an be instant the, speed the best win. Hope. <laughs> you got an instant speed win now with the medallion. Oh, you get yeah. one sorcery. You get one sorcery before they, they interact with the medallion. Speaking of Storm, I gotta let me ask you guys about this card, because I'm curious if this is a card that brings Storm back. It was on our list, but it's another one of the the flipwalkers in Rao Monsoon Mage. So it's a two mana one three. Instance of sorceries cost one less to cast. So it's a brawl, basically. Uh, it is legendary. It says whenever you cast the instant of sorcery during your turn, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, you take a damage. If you win the flip, you can exile it, return it transformed. It's Rao Leyline Prodigy, a two loyalty planeswalker, but it enters with loyalty for each instance and sorcery. Sorcery you've cast this turn. Plus one uh, discount on instance and sorceries for a turn by one. Negative two, two damage divided as you choose between one or two targets. Draw a card if you have a blue permanent that's not Rao. Negative eight, exile the top X cards of your library. You may cast instance and sorceries from among them without paying their mana cost to this turn. So we know that Storm plays Baral and Goblin Electromancer. Does this change the equation? It has the same effect, right? It's the cost reduction effect. What I'm envisioning is you play this like your Baral and you do your storm turn and you cast enough spells that when you choose to flip it, you get enough loyalty that you can negative eight it right away, go eight cards deep, hit the rest of your spells, win the game on the spot. Is that realistic? Is this replacing Brawl or Electric? Is it bad? Because if you lose the flip, you take damage and this is a Brawl that might accidentally kill you as you're trying to storm off. What do you think of this card in storm? It's oh man, I don't know. Like like this seems kind of cute, right? Like this, I I I guess you can just like you're right. You can flip it on the turn. You storm off pretty hard, and then you just like alt it. But I don't know. Wouldn't I just? Uh, I no. I guess this helps dig eight deep. Maybe this is good in storm. If you go I mean, deep, I'm sure you probably win, right? Like if you actually, yeah. I don't know how realistic it is. You have to cast six spells before you flip it. You can't die to losing coin flip damage. And then you can actually do the thing and you probably win. I don't know how realistic that is. It is realistic if you're Storm, though, right? You would think, right? Storm, that's kind of their whole gimmick is I'm going to cast a whole bunch of instances of sorcery this turn. You've described win more. <laughs> like, you got to win and then this card is good. So this lets you Storm <laughs> without having access to the finisher. So you don't have the grape shot in hand. And then your Electromancer becomes... The grape shot, essentially, right? Yeah. Uh, well, not true because you got to dig eight deep and find a grape shot in there. But we'll just pretend that's like given. Uh, this seems to suck. Like it, it's you, <laughs> you have all the you got to untap with this thing, right? You still got to build up sufficient storm count. Like, you got to do what your whole deck is supposed to do, and then you get to cheat by like not having like the 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 one of grape shot in hand. I feel that's not good enough for this, and also it like. Doesn't stack. I, I don't know is stacking Electromancer is a thing, but like it, it doesn't stack uh, because it's legendary. So I don't think it's hmm. enough to give Storm the push it needs. It kind of okay. just like incrementally makes it better, but you still had to storm off and like good luck storming off, right? But what if you have Ruby Medallion, Richard? Then you can cast this for one mana. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> which which <Maybe>. you now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Storm does already play Brawl. 
which is basically the same card except you don't take damage and you never become a planeswalker but it is like otherwise essentially Storm the same is tier card. four so this is now Storm, tier yes. 3.9 right, okay. <laughs> like is that, that enough that's, to that's make fair. it go up to tier three or tier two or tier one no probably not it needs it needs a ritual i think that's the big problem they need to print like a real ritual into modern Medallion. Ruby I don't know why I want Storm to be good. Maybe I don't know, <laughs> disregard that wizard. So on second thought, I don't, I've kind of enjoyed Storm not being good. <laughs> I yeah, uh, definitely don't want to see Storm again. Oh, okay, you don't want to see Storm again. How about Nadu, Winged Wisdom? It's a Civic card. One green and a blue. It's a 3-4 flying. Uh, creatures you control have whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, into your hand. This ability only triggers twice each turn. <laughs> per creature. Modern Horizons per creature. Power creep. <laughs> per creature. <laughs> so Richard, is 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 this is are you paying this because it's a bird? Uh, I know you like your birds. This is not a bird. Like bird. This is the most disgusting power creep I've ever seen, plus confusing rules. Because for each <laughs> creature, you need to count how many triggers it's triggered. But good for you that if this happens, you probably lost the game because they're going infinite. Uh, yeah. So, like, a lightning greaves counts mm -hmm. as an activation. That's zero. Anything that makes a creature on landfall or drawing a card or anything like that would let you go infinite, like, immediately. Because a creature comes in, you can activate twice on it, trigger this thing twice more. Uh, the worst part is it's not real infinite, it's pseudo infinite because you can fizzle at some point. You, so you gotta you gotta exit out. You gotta, you gotta sit, sit there through it. and watch him go through the triggers and count and count the number of times of creatures to make sure they don't fizzle. Uh, what the hell is this card, Seth? Is this a real this card? card? <laughs> I, I it, apparently it is nuts. Uh, yeah, this this card is ridiculous. Like, I, I'm not sure what Watsi is thinking with this one, honestly. This is card is so scary. You mentioned, like, the easiest combo of just being able to Lightning Greaves. There's other equipment that are zero to equip. The fact that it works with any of your things, not just your opponent's things, is wild. And then you also have, like, a, a Leovold, almost. You don't get the card draw hate, but this thing that just sits out, and if your opponent targets your stuff, you're going to draw off that, too. This card's got to be broken, right? It's got to... It's got to be. It seems so easy to go infinite with this. We got Stoneforge. There's a deck in Legacy called Cephalid Breakfast, which is based on the same theory, except it uses these old Cephalid creatures that when they become targeted, you have to mill cards, and then you mill your entire deck by bouncing Shuko or Lightning Greaves back and forth until you mill your deck and then Thassa's Oracle win. I imagine this has to open up that same possibility almost of the same power level in modern where you're just able to use this to not only draw your deck, but you get to put the lands into play untapped. So you're going to have like draw your deck and have unlimited mana to win the game however you want to. So this card has to be good, right? Is there any way this isn't good? It's also pretty well statted. Three, four, <laughs> three, four, flyer. Three, four. <laughs> that's, that's like resto well, angel stats. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wow. Know, it, it, it gets around bow masters because it's just put in your hand. It's yep, not even it's draw not a card. Technically drawing. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> it's absurd. So it, it would suck if this color combination sucks, right? It's like, does it have a backup plan? You got to play Stoneforge if you want the Greaves line. Yeah. And Stoneforge kind of sucks, <laughs> right? So you're playing Bant. Um, but I guess you have a backup of you get Cauldra <laughs> out with Stoneforge or just try to Stoneforge beat the is a good backup plan. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, that seems legit. I, I'm what sure is the you best 5 0 a league with this easy. Uh, the question yeah. is, will it become a top tier deck? I don't know. Depends on what, but it's like Bant. You can play Solitudes, you can play Counter Spells. How can this go wrong? <laughs> what what do the old do... Earl shells look like? Just like slap that together. <laughs> I've also seen people talking about like Ivy style decks, like infect style decks where you're targeting your own creatures with pump spells, uh, prowess style of decks where you're targeting your own creatures with pump spells as a way to generate card advantage. So even beyond the equipment combos, this card has a lot of a lot of potential homes and it's coming on just like a good body as Krim mentioned a three four flyer for three is is a great starting point. So yeah, this card little bit pushed, I would say. Oh, God. And Commander, disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. Oh, yeah. Phil's going to play this in every deck. You know he is. <laughs> uh, disgusting. Uh, speaking of disgusting, uh, Harbinger of the Seas. One blue, blue, two, two. Non-basic lands or islands, baby. Vegas <laughs> of the moon, but, in, but a fish. Better. Like merfolk. 
Yes. Magus of the Moon Pup Center. It is actually Wait, just better. Wait, Magus was single red? It's single red. It was single red. Yeah. This is double yeah. this red. This is double so it blue. Is slightly harder to cast. Yeah, or double blue, yeah. But it's a wizard as well. This is a merfolk. This is, is a, a merfolk, merfolk and a wizard as well. Two very relevant typings. Is merfolk Did, tier one now? Do, yeah, <laughs> is fish getting kicked up a tier now? It. I mean, merfolk had already kind of like been making a bit of a comeback over the last year. And I think this is a big deal because merfolk, they need your opponents to have islands, right? So they can island walk yeah. in with all their Lord of Atlantis effects. But this not only is giving your opponents islands, it's giving you free wins like Blood Moon style. And one of the best parts about this card, even outside of like the merfolk synergies, is turning everything into islands is way better than turning into mountains because... What are you going to do with a bunch of islands? You Magus of the Moon, your opponent can still use their mana to just Lightning Bolt or Unholy Heat your Magus. If you turn it into blue, blue doesn't have answers that are played. So I think people are going to have to start playing like Dismembers and so forth because of this card. Because turning all of your lands into islands is just a much harder lock to break out of than mountains for most decks. I actually think this is a meta mean... breaker. <laughs> this... Because I, I here's, here's the difference this. between Blood Moon, right? You're playing blue, and you can A, protect this thing, but like Seth said, yep. like your lightning bolts are turned off, but B, you have all the other spells to hate on the basics, right? You can turn, uh, wait, you can, right? Spreading seas. Uh, Spreading seas, baby. Yeah. Wh whatever those merfolk are that turn crap into islands. So you cannot get away with just like fetching up like two basics and calling it a day because they can remove those and you're stuck with all islands. So I think this might actually take people off the four, five C mana bases and give you I an actual so. real reason to play two colors so you can muster up enough mana with a Harbinger of the Seas out. Uh, so I am excited for this to kind of police the mana base. Oh, yeah. It's so this card's so good. What do you think about Control Crit? And the other thing about this card that we haven't really talked about is it's kind of like a Omegas of the Moon that decks it wouldn't be able to access traditional Magus because it would ruin their mana too much to splash it can actually play. Could you, is this worth like blue white controlling or anything? Like, is there any way like this is part of, of those style of decks? I mean, I'm definitely still trying to make sure I have my white mana, but because of fetches and whatnot, maybe I can fix my mana base a little bit and blue white looks like it would be pretty good for that. Uh, like I don't know. Moon? I don't know. Now we can only... play real Blue Moon with Mono Blue Moon. <laughs> That's true. It actually is. Uh, I, I think this is something out of the sideboard, right? If for, you could potentially bring it out of the board because right. game one, everyone in their grandma is still going to have like 50 removal spells in their deck. So this will probably die. Also, <clears throat> a thing of note, again, the reason why Magus is good, it's a creature, not an enchantment or artifact, so it can't get besage Uh mm -hmm. This is this is just a juicy card. I I... This is enticing enough to make me want to actually try it in modern. This plus Winter Moon. Oh, uh, yeah. this is. I'm breaking out the fish. I got my Legacy <laughs> Fish deck. I, I'm not sure any of them <laughs> yeah. are still playable in modern, but we're going to bust it out here. Oh, this is super exciting. <laughs> like, I think this is very and, exciting. And yeah. because it's Merfolk, a there's one. a lot of synergies with that that can protect this as well. Yep. Oh, so good. Everyone has yes. islands now. I mean, it's got everyone have the best cards in the set. It turns off ley lines. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> but it dies oh. to solitude. That's very bad. That's very bad. But yes. You can, you can, you can tide binder that trigger. Don't worry. <laughs> 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 they have all the tools because Merfolk got tide binder, which is very yep. strong. And like, oh, does this make Merfolk tier one? Did not. Uh, but what about Harbinger of the Seas? Plus, it has uh, Sylvian or whatever to like draw the cards, protect your team. Feeling is, is very good with yeah, the yeah, Ward yeah, yeah, 1. Yeah, yeah. The Ward 1 is actually relevant here for the Harbinger. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited to mm. see fish. More folks back. They're back. Uh, speaking of control, uh, power balance. This is a callback to counterbalance. <laughs> red, red, enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may reveal the top card of your library. If you do, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost if the two spells... Have the same mana value. Yo, this card is so bad. <laughs> but, like, I want to play it. <laughs> like, you know how hard it is? Top is not even in the format. Yeah, top. Is there? But... Do we have a top or a, a terrible <laughs> no. top? No, right? Mm, like, not really. Well, terrible. No brainstorm. Like a really either. terrible one, There's maybe. Lots of bad ones, sure. But, like, 
this is so bad. And then like, so not only that, like the, the costs in this format are so wide. Like, like you have six costs that are really one cost. I don't have yeah. any six costs. So what am I going to do against that? But do I want to play this? <laughs> to oh, punish yeah, their ley line bindings, throw in some Titans. <laughs> Maybe that's what has to happen. Maybe you play the, you're the ley line deck. And now, you know, you get to like hate out their ley lines. This is kind of cool, actually. I just don't know. We don't have any top things. Yeah, that's that's the issue, right? So counterbalance works really well with Sensei's Divining Top. We don't have that. We don't have Scroll Rag. We don't have Brainstorm. Even let's assume we did. Let's say we're living in the world where those cards exist. Would this card be good in that con? Like, is this where's it compared to counter counterbalance? You think is this as good as counterbalance? Well, counterbalance stops your opponent from doing stuff. Like it sounds like this one. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, yeah. So. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. It's like the commander version where, like, you can't stop people, but if they do something, you can do something too, and that's cool. It's like <laughs> that's what they're going yeah. for, I think. That sounds kind of bad, right? Because, like, what if what they're doing just is completely irrelevant to my strategy? Like, cool. <laughs> I would love to cast your your whatever your spreading seas or your your harbinger. No, no, no. Of the you seas. cast your spell. You cast your spell. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. That's then. Okay, but then that's still kind of rough because the mana is a very very widespread thing in modern yeah is, like uh, is it is way too wild a legal deck in legacy i i feel it has top and counterbalance right it's like there's nothing banned no right? they ban top so oh, they ban top? people do still play miracles sometimes but it's gotten a lot worse Look, i imagine yeah, they ban it's top. gotta suck because you have like the evoke elemental you have like this like giant spread of mana values now it's not that everyone plays one and two mana value spells anymore you have this yeah. giant spread of free spells that screw up your top so even with a top and counterbalance i'm not sure that's even good enough let alone ghetto balance here power balance <laughs> like this one just <laughs> cast your random garbage off the top like it has to be aggro but or something fun. it is it can't it is even fun. be removal I'm... right because yours is going to resolve first so you can't even like get them with your removal off the top like, like what does this even do? just <laughs> just play it with a whole bunch of counters crim and hope they line up they're like oh two drop oh, counter spell gotcha <laughs> turn into yeah. a real counterbalance <laughs> do um, both i mean i want to play both power balance and counterbalance in the same deck <laughs> Ooh, yeah, like uh, I, I don't see a use for it really, but it is funny. I like the callback. All right. Uh, so, so the good thing about having these callback names, even though I poo pooed on them earlier, is instead of reading this giant block of text, I can guess what the card does. So we have <laughs> birthing ritual. Okay, it's one in a green, and it's inscribed. Uh, there's a tome inscribed here at the beginning of your end step. It's an enchantment, by the way. If you control a creature, look at the top seven cards of your library. Then you may sacrifice the creature. If you do, put a creature card with mana value X or less from amongst those onto the battlefield where X is one plus the sacrifice creature's mana value. Put on the rest of your library in a random order. Okay. It's birthing pod, one activation on your end step, seven deep. Top seven. <laughs> only only yeah. seven deep. Only seven deep. So this is like Coco birth or something. Okay. Um, is this good? Is birthing pod oh, broken the, again? <laughs> this card is mana. so bad. It, so but, here, okay. Is here's it? my here's my concern. Here's my concern. Okay, so it's not birthing pod because it's not repeatable. If I right. want a one shot birthing pod, why wouldn't I just play Neoform or Eldritch Evolution or something that gives me my thing right away and I Yagmoth and kill you? Or I get my, you know what? I, what? I, why would I play this? It's like every on my turn, end step, Seth. I might Eldritch Evolution if I have the right thing in the top seven cards of my deck when I could just Eldritch Evolution and do it. Like, so that's that's my criticism of those it's cards. It's one less mana, Seth. It's two <laughs> mana. <laughs> <laughs> and you can uh, set up. Yeah. See, you, you don't you don't kill them immediately. You get two activations, and look how much look how much mana mana <laughs> life you're saving over a real birthing pod. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's true. You get to flex on them a little. Like I could have killed you if I played a different card, but instead <laughs> we're gonna live and play a couple more games as I tutor things from my deck. I mean, am I missing something? Like, is there something I'm missing? Because I see this as just like, why would I ever play this? I mean, I it's not it it's good. not good. Birth, it's not it's not a good. It's birth not good. Pod. But really, not. you would never play this. It's gotta be. What 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 if, what if like, you're just like Yog Moth? Would you play this? That was what I no. first thought. But Yog just wants Eldritch <laughs> Evolution, so you no. can jump from yeah. two to four and get Yog. Yeah. 
And, so I, and I, I don't have to worry about looking at the top seven. I'm just going to go get it. It is cute that they let you peek, peek first. Like, oh, you know, this might whiff sometimes. So we'll let you peek, and then you can decide after you look at your top seven if you actually want to sack. So you can't actually whiff. Oh, wait, what? I mean, you, you can, can whiff in the sense that it does nothing. <laughs> But you get to look at the seven cards first and then decide if you want to sack a creature. <laughs> uh, that's, 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 that's actually hilarious. Okay, last card. It's not on our list, so I got to find it. Uh, the, the land, that coffee something. Do you guys know what it's called? The land? Oh, the green the, one? The oh, green, the green. One. For four mana, that coffee something. Uh, shifting Woodland. Okay, wow, Shifting Woodland. Wow, I think Woodland. nailed it. It enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a forest. Add, add okay. a green. It's a normal land. Delirium 4. Shifting Woodland becomes a copy of target permanent card in your graveyard until end of turn. Activate if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. Is this broken? Yes. Just, 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 just but... copy that Yogg out of the graveyard. Just copy <laughs> that, that, that prime time out of the graveyard. Can we do it? Can we get Delirium in a sane fashion in these decks? <laughs> I think I'm kind of in the camp that I think you might have to build around it. Like, I don't know. Is it realistic to turn on Delirium and Amulet Titan or Yogg? Maybe does Yogg even play non creatures? I mean, I guess you have like Soul Cauldron, Grist, maybe Cord, which Cord. So I guess in theory, you could you could do it. Amulet Titan get Summoners Pact, Explorer, maybe One Rings. So I guess it's possible. I think this card's busted if you build around it. I think Legacy players are have been talking a lot about using in Dark Depths combos, a lot of those shenanigans that go on in Legacy. I imagine this is like some sort of self mill Delirium deck, and then you get an Omniscience, you get a whatever a Grizzle Brand, and like some you can do it with Emrakul Shuffle Trigger on the stack and get an Emrakul and annihilate your opponent. Like so, I imagine there's ways that this. I think this card's busted. I'm not convinced you can just jam it in Yogg though. I'm not sure you can or like aim, can you even jam it in Amulet Titan. That seems like such a perfect home, but without Delirium, it's kind of man right like can i turn on delirium in those decks no they, I can you, they maybe can turn you they got they delirium. delirium they have enchantment creatures they have enchantment. right they, they then, have sagas they have yeah uh, the amulets the bigger problem is do they have lands to replace because oh. amulet amulet like needs a lot of utility land so i don't know if they have room to shove this in there but i'm tired of dying to lands I don't want 31 to 31 lands and not enough room. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I'm tired of dying to lands. Like, Mystic Sanctuary was enough, guys. I don't want to die to Shifting Woodland. You're like, yeah. finally, I dealt with the Yogg. And they're like, cool, Shifting Woodland, <laughs> Yogg, you're dead. Uh, I don't I don't like that. Uh, it copies anything. Omniscience comes to mind. Uh, what else could you copy in Modern that's a permanent? I mean... I don't know. Hmm. They're all Any creatures. creatures okay, okay, I guess yo, you can just copy a Bowmasters at <laughs> instant speed too if you felt like it, just to get the get the effect. <laughs> <True>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's also is you that know what enough? else is funny is is using it on stacks pieces on your opponent's upkeep. So like symmetrical stacks pieces, and then you <laughs> don't have them during your turn because it'll go back into land form. <laughs> <laughs> probably no, the worst if you if you but... have like four mana to try to stack some on their turn <laughs> you probably got get em. a win con instead got him <laughs> i mean i think this card it's got to be it's got to be strong it's got to be strong at least and we also got a, just a bunch more cards that tutor non-basic lands into play i'm a little scared of the lands meta like between all these like non-basic land tutors and the powerful utility lands we're getting whew, the game the game is changing to be more and more about lands i think this is this is an auto include in every commander deck, right? Yeah, I mean, I uh, when you play a I mean, five well, color, I don't know about like four or five not? color, but like any mono <laughs> green or two color green deck, I think I would just jam it. You got enough room for it, why not? And how then, easy is it to get delirium though? I think in a mono Land green or two color deck, I just don't really sorcery care. creature. Yeah, like you just I eventually get it, and if I don't, whatever, it's just a forest that, like, essentially a forest. So I think that I think I would just play it for value, and then in some decks, if you're like Sidisi, Self Mill, Madrotha, like those style of decks is going to be bonkers. Obviously, if you're like aggressively filling your graveyard, the card cost is really good. Well, okay, I don't know, right? Because we have to fill our decks with all these new MDFCs. And, surreal <laughs> and everything. So I gotta see what the mana base shakes up to be because there's a lot of good. Uh, 
lands in this deck. So we, we have like the dual lands and then we also have the three life lands. Plus we have these lands and there's one in every color, by the way. Uh, yep. So there, there's room for it. But I can't strongest. imagine four mana just copy like anything on a land in your graveyard. It's oh. not good enough in Commander. I, I feel it's pretty high up Got there on the me. utility list. Um, I will cut. We're, we're back to. I, I worked hard to get to like five basics, Seth. I think we're back to zero back, basics. Back down. <laughs> cool, no. I think we're back yeah. to zero basics with Modern Horizons 3. There's like no room. Oh. There's no room. Oh. Tomer is going to eat us next season, Richard. He is going to Look, absolutely, absolutely. One eat, out of five eat games, our I will die to a ruination. <laughs> but four out of five games, I'll be copying merit lodges and crap. I don't know. Like, whatever, right? Like, you're just I, popping right off so you. hard, right? Like, yeah. I don't even know how to find uh, room for my three basics anymore. What a what cut, world. We gotta, we gotta cut spells now. Which it's like the 50 land I meta. like the most. <laughs> it's the 50 <laughs> land meta now. 37 is not enough. You just go to 50 because why Why play spells? They don't add mana. You just play only MDFCs. They can add mana. You might actually not be wrong about going to like 45 lands with more MDFCs and utility lands. Just yeah. let your lands do all the work. Yeah. It's, it's like actually like landfall decks where you're like your lands are actually spells, so you might as well just play 45. But that's just literally every deck now, though. So <laughs> we'll do that. Yeah. All right. Uh, we said we were going to talk about Commander. We still ended up there, but we had a lot a of 60 card. A lot of 60 cards. There's still so many cards. Uh, we haven't talked about Phyrexian Tower is in the set. Uh, we have some mana dorks. Uh, Fanatic of Ronis looks super exciting. Warren Soul Trader, another combo piece. Uh, lots and lots and lots of cards. So check out MDG previews, and we'll probably uh, catch the stragglers probably next week. Yeah, uh, I think that brings us to the end of the podcast for today. No fish mail this week. Too many spoilers. Uh, but Richard, in the future, if people want to send in their fish mail, how do they go about doing that? All right, hit us up on Twitter at MG Goldfish with the hashtag MG Fish Mail, and we'll get to your questions on air. And I believe that brings us to the end of episode 486 of the MTG Goldfish Podcast. So, Richard and Graham, thanks for hanging out. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks to Card Conduit for supporting the show. And we'll be back next week to talk about the rest of the Modern Horizons 3 spoilers and whatever else goes on in the world of magic. So, until then, have an amazing week, everyone. And this is Crew signing out.